Thank you for listening back through the Crowley Time Archives with me, Tom Crowley. I hope you'll enjoy Episode 2, Global Triumph. If you do, please consider supporting the show by buying a copy of the first ever Crowley Time album, Discount Bin. From Tom Crowley and featuring guest musicians Alex Beechin and Odin Orn Hilmarsen. I am a space cartographer, a charter of the sky. Featuring songs from the podcast, former Patreon exclusives. All of us reaching down to our phones for an emergency call. Emergency call. And many new and remastered tracks. I keeps my brain in my head. Go to CrowleyTime.com and buy Discount Bin, the music of Crowley Time Volume 1, today. Good afternoon, this is your pilot speaking. We're currently flying over Shropshire, cruising at five feet, and my co-pilot is just advising me that we should really increase our altitude soon, so I'll get on to that very shortly. Oh, and I'm very sorry to say, we've just hit a cow. Pardon us, Bessie. Hope you're all having an enjoyable flight. And if you look to the front of your cabin, you'll see that it's very nearly Crowley time. Crowley time! Hello. And welcome to Crowley Time with me, Tom Crowley. With me, Tom Crowley. Well, Love Me True, it's episode two. It's widely recognized that one of something is a unit, but two of something is an absolute unit. If there were only one William sister, would we all have been so excited? If your table at the restaurant has only a salt shaker but no pepper, you would immediately lean over to the table next door and steal theirs. If Janus, the Roman god of transitions, had only one face on one side of his head, he would have just looked like a guy. So, like Janus himself, let's think about new beginnings, new endings, and second chances. Quickly, monster! In here! In here! Stop! Stop! All of you! You mustn't hurt him! He may look frightening, but he's innocent! He knows not what he does! He's like a child! Yes, he broke Artie Holtzman's arm, but only because he was trying to pull him out of the path of that carriage! And yes, he may have also crushed Frau Wendling's daughter, but only because he doesn't know his own strength! And yes, he might have cut in front of the line in the supermarket, pretending he didn't know that it's the same queue for the cashier as the self-checkout. But he doesn't know what he's doing. He's like a child, I tell you. And yes, I admit he may have deliberately shortchanged the cashier in the hopes that she wouldn't notice, and she didn't. But he's a simple creature. He's not trying to hurt anyone. And yes... He does have a secret second Twitter account which he uses mostly to send sexual threats to Susan Sarandon, but he doesn't understand the wider implications of that behaviour. He's just been on the men's rights activist YouTube channels too much. I try to stop him, but I can't watch him all the time. Doctor, be cool. And yes, he does try to radicalise teenagers via his Twitch streams, and he does have a rather unreconstructed attitude towards notions of consent, but... But wait, no, what are you doing? No, stay away from my creature. He's innocent, I tell you, like a child. Oh, oh! I knew I shouldn't have let him have that Jordan Peterson book. Next on Review Night, we present the inimitable Mr. Bernard Breslaw with his new hit, I Keeps My Brain in My Head. I keeps my brain in my head And my ideas Come out of my mouth Some of them are good And some ain't great But I keeps my brain in my head Sliced white bread Or feather like lead Or an automated bath People tease 
when I hear these and it hurts but you've got to laugh cause I keeps my brain in my head and sometimes blood comes out of my nose but I'm feeling well as you can tell cause I keeps my brain in my head thank you thank you I only ask that was Mr Bernard Breslaw with his new hit I Keeps My Brain in My Head tune in next week when Mr Breslaw will favour us with his new record I Keeps My Shoes on My Feet until then good night and God save the Queen Type XK92 Small Talk At the Vandenbacker Center, we believe that language equals words, and words equals meaning, and speaking equals words. In this study, we have attempted to measure the difference in minor everyday interactions, also known as small talk, between British English and American English. Here, we observe two Englishmen bumping into each other. They know each other a bit, but not very well. Like you give them a nod in the pub, you know. Oh, hello. All right. That's a cloud, isn't it? Yes, that's a cloud. Yeah. All right, love to the wife. And you? I'm not married. Oh. Minor pleasantries, small observations, and as little detail as possible. Now... Contrast this with these two American men meeting for maybe the third or fourth time, like you give them a high five in the bar, you know. Hello, Steve. Hello, Carl. Name three things that give you passion in life. Friends, food, music. What is the saddest experience you've ever had involving music? I watched my father die while Woody Guthrie's blowing down this road played on the hospital radio. Describe how that made you feel. I felt remorse, relief, and shame at feeling relief. When did you lose your virginity? 2nd of October, 1993, on a pool table. How high was the pool table? Two feet, four inches. An incredible distinction. Observe again. British English. You've, uh, got a coffee? Yes, I, I got it from there. Oh. American English. The only true freedom is for a man to carve his own path. True freedom is accepting love and responsibility. How can limits inspire freedom? We're talking about the freedom to accept happiness. Your premise is fundamentally flawed. British English. How's your mum? Fine. How's yours? She's fine. Well... Yes? No, no. She's fine. Oh. American English. Standardized testing. Holistic learning programs. Now, let's observe what happens when we introduce a British small talker to an American small talker. Look at that hedge. That hedge reminds me of my first major health scare. Oh. Oh. Went to the bathroom and found a growth that looked just like that. No, I'd, I'd rather not. S- sorry, can we, can we stop the test? Didn't see the doctor for a couple of weeks. Was it because I was afraid or because secretly I hoped I was going to die? Please, please, l- l- let me out, please. What are the dark thoughts that spring to mind uninvited when that cold chill of fright runs down your abdomen? Please, please, someone, let me out, please, someone help me. Please, please. Wow, what a culture clash. So, the conclusion... If two Anglophone people from different cultures are in a position where they might have to engage in small talk, we at the Vandenbacker Centre advise the following approach. Alright. Hello. I am diseased. The disease is profoundly contagious. My condolences. I will leave you immediately. Thank you. That would be appropriate. And there you have it. Another social minefield navigated safely by the Vandenbacker Centre. Our next conversational study will be... Christmas dinner, a feast in hell. Join us, won't you? The Vandenbacker Centre. Because people is talking. All right, so once we secure West Coast distribution, we're golden. But don't go with Peterson, he's a jerk. Yes, sir. Ah, Charlie, great to see you. Wonderful to see you, old fellow. Okay, so this is your seat here. Very kind. So that's everyone. We have Charlie here. You all know him. Hello. The lovely Vanessa. She's playing Bella. Hi. (laughs) Mac here is playing Big Joe. Howdy. And Jimmy here is our PA. He'll be reading stage directions. Hiya. Okay, Jimmy. Take us away. 
Big City by Charles Chaplin. Open on an ordinary city street with gas lamps, a hot dog vendor, etc. Cut to the little tramp. He is gazing wide-eyed at the hot dog stand. He licks his lips. He reaches into his pocket and pulls it inside out. A moth flies out. Little tramp looks into camera and speaks. Dialogue card. Sorry, uh, Jimmy, the cards are part of the stage directions. Oh, sorry, sir. That's okay, just don't let it happen again. Time is money. Ahem. <clears throat> Dialogue card. Not a cent. The little tramp's eyes dart back to the hot dog stand. He sees a large man with a bushy mustache, Big Joe, arguing with the vendor. Big Joe points at the sign, which reads, Hot dogs, five cents. Then points at the hot dogs. Then points at the sign. Then points at the hot dogs. The vendor resists his arguments, pointing at the sign insistently. Big Joe picks up two halves of hot dog bun from the stall, then jams them on either side of the vendor's face. Reaction shot. The vendor, with the bun stuck on his head, looks furiously into the camera. Big Joe laughs. Dialogue card. Now there's a hot dog. <laughs> the little tramp sees his opportunity and sneaks up to the hot dog stand. Sorry, could I have a glass of water? No. Okay. The little tramp sees his opportunity and sneaks up to the hot dog stand, avoiding the watchful eye. The tramp and Bella are lying on the grass together. The little tramp makes a small daisy chain and offers it to Bella as a wedding ring. Bella puts it on, elated, then looks aghast at the ring. Dialogue card. You'll need a bigger rock than that. <laughs> uh, Bella throws the ring into the little tramp's face. In reaction, he falls back and rolls down the grassy hill, very close to the oncoming traffic. Big Joe swings at the little tramp but misses as the little tramp ducks out of the way. Big Joe's collar becomes attached to the metal hook at the end of the crane arm. <sighs> The little tramp swings the lever on the crane, and Big Joe is swung around and dropped into the river. Bella runs up to the little tramp whew, and kisses him on the cheek. They both laugh. Dialogue card. All's well that ends well. Reaction shot of Big Joe in the river, treading water and spluttering. The end. <sighs> what do you say? Will it play in Pittsburgh? <laughs> Great work, Charlie. Not at all. Thanks, Vanessa. No problem. <laughs> Great to see you, Mac. Howdy. So we'll get any rewrites to you by next week, and shooting will commence on the 19th. Oh, and Jimmy. Yes, sir? Give me some coffee, will you? I'm parched. <sighs> All right, shit pipers, pipe shitters, crap bandits, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Shit Pipe, recently rated the world's number one podcast about the sewage and drainage industry. I'm your host, Zach Tackle. Hell of a week, folks. I just had a new toilet put in. Don't mean to brag. Things are just going pretty okay for me right now. It's the latest thing from Japan. You gotta import it special. Cost me a couple thousand bucks. I got it installed right in the studio here. It's got an inbuilt macerator and big and small flushes, a standard. They say the big flush can take your arm off. Let's have a quick blast. Yeah, it's a nice action. Glad to have it here, too, because editing these things can take a while, and you don't always want to stop working when nature calls, you know what I mean? Folks, the sewers around where I live have been having some serious problems lately. I know you guys want to hear about it. Local sanitary services were digging up the street. Real big disruption. I didn't have a shower for about a week. I was smelling like a landfill. Eventually, they found the problem. There was a huge blockage. There's a deposit of old TV guides. Near as they can figure, some joker wanted to get rid of his collection and just flush those babies right down the can. You know what I say to that? I was just a little one that time. Folks, today's episode sponsored by Litterboxed. It's America's favorite mail-order kitty litter service. Till your kitty cat learns to use the big boy John, this is the next best thing. You get 20% off your first month subscription by using the offer code SHITPIPE, so don't forget. Our guest today is Gary O'Rourke. He's the head of drainage and flooding at Surrey County Council. That's in merry old England. He's on a book tour here in the States right now. We're going to be talking about everything drainage, so stick around. Unclog the bog! Yeah, you know, and once it pops up, you can't flush it back down there again. No, no, I would certainly advise against that. It's a crazy business, right? Well, I think it's a very important business because the nature of removing waste from one's home is right, one right, of the right, most right, fundamental right, right, signs right, right, of a, right, right, a civilized right, right, right. society. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you can have electric lights, but if you're shitting in the corner of your house, you're not at the top table, you know what I mean? Well, I wouldn't quite put it like that, but if you want to resort What's to the craziest thing you ever found down a drain? 
Well, I, I can think of a couple. Because you know they found a whole lot of TV guides in the pipes around here, right? Yes, I, w- I was sitting here when you said that before. Once I found a rabbit in the pipes under the house. W- was it still alive? No. Oh. Should have seen the look on its face. Oh, I can imagine. So what's your book? Oh, it's a personal memoir of my many years. Look, I got a copy right here. Yes. Unblocking the Past. That's a good title. Thank you. It's about my many years working... Like you're opening up about stuff, like a drain. Yes, exactly. I I wanted to address a lot of the misconceptions people have about our industry. People think you're into weird sex stuff? What? And it's like, that's work. I don't take that stuff home with me. Well, nobody's ever... Well, I haven't... It's more the relationship between water services and their community, and I wanted to go back to some of the history, too, about... Gary, this is great. we got to take a break. Really? Yeah, stay tuned, everybody. We've been... This episode is brought to you by Hello Brush, the best online toilet brush retailer out there. Is your toilet brush looking a little worn down? Like maybe it's seen too much? Say hello to Hello Brush. They got all the colors, including white, pink, and off-white. Get the perfect brush to suit your bathroom. All brushes come with 100% reinforced vinyl bristles. They can scrub anything off your bowl, no matter what you're putting down there. 10% off your first purchase with the offer code SHITPIPE. we got 20 more minutes of toilet-based ad promotions, then we'll be back with What's-His-Name. Stay with us, we got more shit talk than the third volume of Joan Rivers' autobiography. Is the breakneck pace of big city life getting you dine? Oysters for sale. Ticket ticket, sir. Get away from my wife. Then perhaps it's time for a change. Cratville Garden City is England's newest and most fashionable place to live. Measuring six miles across, one mile dine, and a convenient 12-hour walk from London's King's Cross, Cratville is the place to be for young professionals in this new age of wonders. Was your life shattered by the mindless brutality of the Great War? Then begin again with a new life in Cratville Garden City, where you will live out the rest of your life in peace and prosperity long into the latter half of the 20th century, because surely we've learned our lesson by now. Cratville is the brainchild of Lord Peter Jacob Cratt of Dorking, who has a very particular vision for the future of this country. It is my conviction that every man born must be freed from the chains of contractual employment and be released into the uninhibited freedom of indentured servitude. And it's that vision which drives every aspect of Cratville life. The cornerstone of the city's economy is Lord Cratt's rich and deep salt mines, where every man of working age spends between 8 and 19 hours of his day. You are Mr Nigel Hobbs, are you not? I am indeed, sir. And you are a resident of Cratville Garden City? I am indeed, sir. And as such, you are a full-time employee of the salt mines? I am indeed, sir. How are you and your family enjoying life here in Cratville? It's been a revelation, sir, I don't mind telling you. My children just adore playing in the lush gardens and communal spaces of the city. And my wife finally has the window box she always dreamed of. You live rent-free, of course. Yes, every salt miner in the town and their families are accommodated free of charge in exchange for their work in the mines. Our house is spacious and clean, with one room for every two of our eight children. It's the sort of place that, back in London, would probably cost you something in the region of £30. £30? Well, fancy that. Listeners, there's an awful lot of machinery and a lot of physical exertion going on down here, which you can't see. It appears a rather gruelling day's work, Mr Hobbs. It can be, yes, sir. The real challenge is the salt itself, sir. In its unrefined form, it's uh, particularly acrid and can erode human skin on contact, hence these heavy gloves. But uncautious workers can find themselves losing half or even two-thirds of their skin in an average day's work. Better to be cautious, then. Yes, sir. But even if I fall afoul of the salt, as so many have, there is always Lord Cratt's very generous health insurance policy. And what is that health insurance policy? A bag of prunes and a year's supply of brandy, sir. Hmm. Perhaps you could afford to be a little less cautious after all. (laughs) Oh, no, sir. Oh, no. You have to watch yourself down here, sir. Yes, I understand. Never mind the salt, sir. It's the wildlife. I've seen unconscionable beasts down in the deeper tunnels I have. Yes, very good. Like a rat... 
the size of a horse with what looked like fins and scales, sir. All right, that's enough. My manager says it was a saline hallucination, sir, but I knows what I've seen. Get, get, get off me. But enough about work. Let's play. The Crattville Amphitheatre plays host to a phenomenal programme of plays, musical productions and the opera, all penned by Lord Cratt himself. Here's just a sample of last month's tentpole production, Mother's Salty Son. It's the salt, son. It's taken your skin. Now it's taking your compassion. Compassion be damned, Mother. Compassion can't put food on the table or a house on the children. I've lived a salt man, and by God, I'll die a salt man in about 23 minutes. And after a long day's work, rest and play, there's nothing like the comforts of home. Look, there's a hard-working chap now, driving home in one of Krat Motors' new salt-powered cars. Oh, dear. Well, had he made it home, he'd have arrived to find a loving wife and children, hand-picked for him on arrival in Cratville. It's a carefully calculated and methodical process of spousal selection. And the ladies aren't complaining. Oh, yes, it's lovely here, with a husband and family and a nice place to live. Nice big kitchen to cook in even if everything does taste a little too salty. I were a fishwife before I come here, and before that a mutton wife, and before that a coal wife, and I don't mind telling you I much prefer this arrangement. And my Herbert's a lovely fellow. I were lucky to be paired with him. Yes, on balance, I'd have to say I'm a lot happier here now, living as an ordinary man-wife. Oh, speak of the devil. Herbert, come and speak to the nice man from the radio. I seen one of those salt rats again. Oh, God, Herbert, here, sit down. What do they want? What do they want? So consider a change of scenery and find your little piece of happiness in Cratville. All are welcome. Just ask Lord Crat himself. Salt, fresh air, and enjoyment. These are the qualities upon which a healthy body and mind are built. In my city, no man shall be denied these fundamental rights. Come to Cratville Garden City and live, and thrive, and salt. None shall be denied. All shall be accepted in this garden paradise. The salt rats are not real. Applications for residency in Cratville Garden City should be addressed to Lord Cratt, 1 Cratville Garden City Boulevard, Cratville Garden City, C1. Please include a self-addressed envelope, a passport photograph, a doctor's certificate confirming your tolerance of salt, confirmation of your current address, and... Oh. Yes, I suspected I'd be meeting you sooner or later. Look, you aren't real. You are a hallucination. You're merely a morsel of undigested salt. Retreat from my vision immediately. Lord Krat commands it. And there we have it. Did you think this episode was better than the first? Worse than the first? Exactly the same as the first. You have to decide. Now that there are two, you have to compare them to each other. You can't help it. Nobody can. Your mind will, at this very moment, be thinking back over the first episode and wondering whether you enjoyed this one more or less. It's all part of the comparative and contrasting systems of reasoning which elevates we humans above the apes. Except for the orangutans. Nobody's better than them. The next episode will be released when fair play and honesty have finally defeated credulity and pettiness in British motor racing. So make sure to subscribe, so you'll be alerted at the precise moment that happens. I'll see you then, when the sundial once again points its lazy shadow at Crowley time. Everything you've just heard was made by me, Tom Crowley. If you've enjoyed my offerings, please give this show a nice review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast sluice of choice. Please submit all praise, questions, or complaints to at atomcrowley on Twitter. And remember, all work and no play is simply what's expected from the millennial workforce, so there's no point complaining.
Have you, uh, have you seen that film? Which one? You know, the new one with the uh, thingy with the face. Oh, yes. Uh, wasn't he in that other one? Yes, yes, that's him. Oh, right. N- no, no, I haven't. Oh, right. What did you think of it? Oh, I haven't seen it either. Oh, right. Did you not want to? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I, I could be tempted. Well, neither of us has seen it. We could go together. Uh, no, no, you're all right. Oh, yes, yes, fine. <laughs>